You can talk about your book. Hey. Okay. My book and videos. I have video. <laughs> oh, yes. We've, well, we've begun. We've Hello, stuff. everyone. Yeah, Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Lovely yes, to have hi. you. Danny, why don't you go ahead? <laughs> oh, oh if, you, if, you're, if you're ready to go, take it away. <laughs> well, we have Dr. Effie Chow here and uh, her lovely assistant, Betty. So today uh, we're going to be talking with Dr. Chow about Qigong and her many achievements throughout her time. Uh, welcoming, co-hosting with me today is Dane Dormio. Welcome, Dane. Thanks. Good to be here. Good to see you. And Dr. Chow, thank you very much for blessing us with your presence and sharing uh, your amazing story. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. And Betty, thank you for joining us too to help us out uh, showing Qigong. So Betty, uh, or um, Dr. Chow, why don't you tell us, uh, how did you get to where you are? How did you find qi Qigong, Tai Chi, and spend your whole life studying this stuff? Oh my, I was lucky to be born into it mm. from a classical Chinese family who practiced Chinese medicine and all the aspects about life, you know, because mm. Chinese medicine isn't like Western medicine. You just deal with medical problems and dealing with the thing. We deal with life and how you live your life. So it really is is a misnomer to call it uh, traditional Chinese medicine. It's traditional Chinese health and all its ramifications because it takes in the spirit, the mental, and the physical. And it embraces everything that your life is composed of. Relationships and uh, family and your community, finances and uh, sexual aspects and other commitments and, and all of that. And even arts and performance, it's all embraced into the fact of life. All right. Mm -hmm. So people are taking Qigong and TCM as a very, you know, a straight and narrow path. You say Qigong and they, oh, that exercise and meditation. No, it is not just exercise and meditation. It is a way of life. So positive mental attitude and also how you relate to people and how you relate to animals how you relate to the environment, and that's a big problem right now, isn't it? So that's the, the whole aspect of traditional Chinese medicine. And qigong, qi means breath, it means the life force, and it's as simple as that. You don't breathe, you're dead, right? Very and true. Low level <laughs> oxygen, so it's oxygenation. So if you have low level oxygen, then you have low level health. And so qi, gong, gong means to cultivate, to manifest. So we work the qi, and there are many, many different styles. And I have my own that I developed, it's called Chao Integrated Healing System, or the Chao Medical Qi Gong, all right? Mm. So, so, and there are over 5,000 different styles in China. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. That's, that's a lot. A, that's a minimal, <laughs> oh, that's a minimal number because a doctor went to China to exactly explore how many, how many style, and he said there's thirty five thousand, and he says I don't dare say that. <laughs> well, if you look at it, Qigong mm -hmm. is originated by each individual standing and sitting and you know and feeling the chi and developing all that they feel with nature all right so that's every individual developing a different style of chi or basically feeling the universe feeling the life force that is around us all the time and so it's a basis of traditional chinese medicine if it's balanced the yin and the yang is balanced or the negative and the positive polarity, then you're healthy. And if there's an increase in yang or increase in yin, then you get relative symptoms. You know, mm -hmm. mind and the spirit is really important. So what I feel and have discovered that 
really the spirit and mind is the most important. If there's an imbalance in the spirit and the mind, mm -hmm. then you get physical manifestations. And that's where Western medicine comes in and look at these physical manifestations and call it and name it a disease. And the immune system, and this is under the, the present critical condition of uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, that your immune system is the basic theory in Chinese medicine. Goes back its history. Mm -hmm. It is balancing the yin and yang of energy and that it balances it out so that your immune body, your immune system at all levels is at its powerful state. So it resists invasion by invaders, whether it's virus or, or uh, bacteria or the weather, the weather <laughs> and, and, and food, you know, you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is that right? And so, oh, yeah. and so the food is very important and which is not taking a high rank, you know, in our society. You know, junk food, you know, McDonald's and, you know, uh, fries, and, et cetera. And so we, we temper the food by the yin and yang also. And to that, you know, the, for example, the meats are yang and the vegetables mm. are yang. But however, with the meat, there's a yang within the yin within the yang. And within mm -hmm. the, in the vegetable, there's a yang within the yin. It goes by color too. Very fascinating. And I teach all of this too. I also mm. cook, teach Chinese cooking. I've taught it over mm. television for health, for health. Because the way it's cooked, it's really to preserve the nutrients in the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. food. Yes. And we don't have all vegetable or all meat. The relative percentage generally is 85% vegetable and 15% meat. Carbohydrate is mm. just a serving, you know, because carbohydrate turns into sugar and sugar is not good for the body. So, yeah. on, but this is a overall picture of what, how complex Chinese medicine is and simple. You know, so we have the the list of division, the the practice that is of the mind. So it's meditation and positive mental attitude, speech and action, and doing the exercises and meditating. This is fostering the spiritual and the inner spirit. And so then we go to food, then we go to herbs, and then there's moxibustion, and then there's cupping, and then mm -hmm. we have then massage. And that's uh, on more, a twin, huh? on more. And I teach all of this. It's very exciting. People really love it. And so then the surgery of the East is what? The puncture, the acupuncture, yeah. the needle penetrating the skin. And that's Western style surgery, cut, you know, et cetera. And let me just say something about why surgery was not advanced in China. Apparently, in 200 BC, there was surgery and very successful surgery. However, because of the connection of the spirit, mind, and body, so that if you excise even just a little wart, you're taking the spirit and the emotion away. So, it, surgery never really developed, you know. Mm -hmm. Because people felt they took the spirit and the and the and the mind from them as well. Okay, it's not just a physical piece of material. Mm. Isn't that interesting? Oh, it's very interesting. Yeah. And nobody has covered this really, from my knowledge, and they don't even teach that in the Chinese medical schools. You know, in the Chinese medicine schools, and and so therefore. Uh, yes, surgery has never advanced. It was very advanced before. And mm -hmm. so because of the philosophical, psychological, and uh, the wholeness of the individual. So if they took something out, then it part of the whole and is taken away. So mm -hmm. we deal with the body, the mind, and spirit holistically. You know, you can spell it with a W or with just H. <laughs> I like it with... Just H, you know, H-O-L-I-S-T-I-C. 
but they're calling it so many different things, like integral medicine and integrated health and energy medicine, and, and there's all these adaptive terms. So I like to keep it to traditional Chinese medicine, you know, mm, or mm. Chinese health practices. And so we keep it pure and to demonstrate the really phenomenal possibilities with traditional Chinese medicine. Mm. So in the 1970s, 1977 is when acupuncture came in. And I was fortunate to assist the legislators to help write up the legislation. I didn't do it myself. We had numbers of community people. And I would, did you know that the acupuncturists were jailed at that time? They were killed? Jailed. Oh, jailed. Oh, yeah. oh. For practicing medicine without a license. Mm. And then mm. we had a good lawyer, real smart. Lawyer. So I would go to Sacramento and said, I got two hours to help with this legislation stuff, you know. And I got to go back to the jail down in San Francisco and help these, quote, jailbirds. <laughs> the acupuncture, I managed to stay out of jail. I helped them, you know. Mm. But I was maneuvering enough that I what I would I didn't end up in jail. And so I would go back down to San Francisco jail and help get them your process and everything like help them get out uh, out of jail. And mm -hmm. and at that time, that was really the exciting time, 1970s. The homeopathists, they were also persecuted. And the and the holistic doctors, they were persecuted. And so mm -hmm. actually our lawyer was very smart because we were the first cases, the acupuncturists. So I'm telling you a little bit of history here, you know, for America. And, <laughs> and the West in, in Africa. And so the so they jailed the acupuncturists for practicing medicine without a license. So we had an Italian lawyer, not a Chinese lawyer, an Italian lawyer. And so he, he posed this argument. He says, nobody was claiming to practice Chinese medicine. They were practicing acupuncture. So the case got thrown out. Mm. And it was an Italian lawyer. And then what happened? Uh, the homeopathists, also the same thing. We're not practicing medicine. We're practicing the Greek model of homeopathy. That got thrown out. That, that was exciting time. Today we have you know, blips and problems, but nothing like the before. And they held 10,000 needles into embargo at the at the docks. 10,000 needles. They wouldn't let it go through. It just sat, you know. And and so anyway, and then the doctor too, um, uh, he was, he was um, jailed, uh, arrested for practicing uh, also uh, medicine, Ill, Ill, illegal, Ill, 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 improperly. He said, MD. He said, I wasn't practicing medicine. I was teaching people how to be healthy. Mm, mm. <laughs> Good loophole. <laughs> yeah, and he got off too. You know? <laughs> so, anyway, um, uh, so the legislation that I help with is still in practice right now. It's. Mm. Uh, in legislation, of course, there's been some changes, but the basic premises are still there. So, so I'm really pleased to be part of the history, you know. And so, so what we need to do is mm -hmm. right now, the it's proven what terrific miracles that happened, because and I call it miracles because if you've been going for years and you can't get things uh, helped and you're suffering and you have side effects from drugs, of which I experienced, and side effects from surgery, of which I experienced. And I used Chinese medicine and Qigong to heal myself. Otherwise, I would have been dead by 2015. That was when it happened. As I had, I had a couple of near-death experiences at that time. And so, uh, so I know I'm not afraid of death now, but I want to die too, too early either. <laughs> We do our best. <laughs> well, the thing is, we can do a whole lot better than we are. Mm. Because we're held by our fears and we're held by our restrictions. And they and we held by opinion. We let people opinionate us out of function. 
Do you understand mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? That there's rules and regulation, but I've always maneuvered to change it, you know, and that's what the Tao is. Change, the, the only constancy is change because the Tao philosophy in Western Chinese medicine is. And so it's the only constancy is change. And so therefore, the politicians using the platform, we're going to change. I mean, it's so stupid in a way <laughs> because we should be changing every moment, right? And yeah. so, right? So you folks are familiar with this. Change is if, otherwise you've been stagnant, stagnant, and you would have problems if you didn't change all that. You wouldn't become an adult from a baby or from a from a uh, egg, you know, a sperm. You wouldn't develop into a, a child, and you wouldn't uh, be developed into adult and growing old. That's change, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so anyway, uh, do you have questions right now? I'm trying to lay a lay a a, a background. And oh, it's fine. <laughs> You're okay. That one, you know, for people, because everybody thinks, oh, qigong, exercise and meditation. And mm. it is, and why Betty is is on with me. She is absolutely amazing because she's gone through numbers of challenges, and because I say that uh, qigong in Chinese deals with the whole of the individual, not just physical pain, not just a physical problem. And we have success with cancer. You know, I just had uh, another cancer case. Uh, he had hepatitis. And mm. in years ago, and they didn't have anything except the interferon, and he was getting worse and worse. And so he came and did Chao Qigong and with Chinese medicine, and he got cured, literally cured, for 15 mm. years. Now, last year, he was diagnosed with rectal cancer, and it was a big hole. Like I said, we have the, we have the thing. I, I don't have the pictures with you, but not have the the, you know, the x-rays and all that, the mm -hmm. scans. And it shows a big hole like this. And and then within three months, we managed to close it to all those clothes. And the doctor was very surprised. They said, wow, I can't believe it in a way. We just thought we would stop the, you know, stop the, uh, uh, the development. We didn't expect mm -hmm. to close. And so after that, after that, another six months, he was both going through chemotherapy, the radiation, and then surgery. So he still wanted him to have surgery, even though he was improved. So he was, and that was at the edge of the pandemic here. Can, can you imagine somebody having to go into surgery, et cetera, at this time? So it was really creative. So he called me up and he says, oh, we had another scan and, uh, and test, and I'm free from cancer. The doctor was surprised or something. He says, I'm clear, no surgery, and et cetera. And John's been on television with me, et cetera. And uh, yes, it is. It really, we clap a lot, you know, for it. <laughs> because that's your local point, right? Yeah. The, the really, and so when you clap, the children know. When your kids clap, you know, they're, they're innovating themselves. So, I, with my students and clients, and even everyday life, we clap a lot. Every time there's good news, oh, wow. Come on, all of you clap. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It brings joy, joy and laugh. And that's how children learn, right? Mm -hmm. That's how children learn. Because a child, when he's learning to walk or learning to stand, so he gets up and stands up and and then he fell. So you're saying, hey, hubby, hey, dear, come take a look. He stood up. So the husband come and see, well, he's sitting on the floor. Well, you didn't see him standing up. Oh, good, good, good. Let's start to clap. I mean, can you can you see that <laughs> scenario, right? That happens in all the household with children. Good, good. So the children learn that clapping means something happy. So mm -hmm. we know the first time, but then repeatedly, Oh, is that what it is? They're happy that I did this? That's how the learning is by repetition. I'm an educator, you know, uh, my PhD in education. By the way, I'm a public health nurse and psychiatric nurse. 
and mm -hmm. I'm a punctuous, and I'm a Qigong grandmaster. So, so I combine all these things together, you know, to have a holistic approach to what life is. But I want to let Betty do mm -hmm. some and showing you some of the things, you know, that she's done. And uh, so she's had multiple things such as eyes and, you know, kidney and skin and, and uh, uh, all kinds of uh, challenges. And so, uh, Betty, do you want to, uh, Betty, let me introduce her. Betty is a award-winning realtor no. with uh, Berkshire, <laughs> with Berkshire, Hello, Berkshire Betty. Hathaway. Yes, with uh, Warren Buffett, who's head of it, oh, and man. she's an award-winning realtor. Okay, and uh, and so and she's also into sort of art because, as I said, that art is part of chi, part of your life, right? So, Betty, tell them your fascinating story. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Chow. I wanted to give a testimonial how Chow Qigong has helped me so much in my life, Dr. Chow. And uh, as you mentioned, my eyesight problem, um, because I have to read a lot of detailed documents before I used to have to use reading glasses. And with uh, Dr. Chow's I assage, I was able to do this. I learned this quite easily, and I'm able to read now without my glasses. I want to give you an example real quick. Um, this is from a soup cookbook, and you can see the letters. The print is very small. It's like eight is points. Is it too French onion soup. Uh, it is a traditional pick-me-up for uh, the early morning after the night before. The extraordinary taste galvanizes uh, us back into life. So, yes, let's all try some delicious onion soup. I'm not going to make it for you now. But this mm -hmm. is very important to a lot of people. I wanted to mention that Chow Qigong does have eye assuage that can help with your eyesight. Mm -hmm. The other thing that helped me was my bladder. Um, I would have to go and pee and then right after that. So that is very bothersome. And actually, a lot of people suffer from that, too. And what helped me was when Dr. Chow taught me proper breath and posture. So um, to breathe in through the nose while expanding my stomach and breathe out through the mouth by re retracting my stomach. So I'm going to do it again without talking. And then the posture, I used to do songs like this, and Dr. Chow taught me to stand upright, imagine a silver thread going through my body. And so standing up, that did help me uh, recover from that bladder problem. And I also want to say proper uh, posture is so important as we many of us work in front of a laptop computer and we may be hunched up. And so when you have good posture, sitting upright, you have more oxygen coming to your brain so you can think a lot clearer. So isn't mm -hmm. that great? So I'm sort of like slumping here and then you have hardly any oxygen coming to you. And then the third uh, thing that helped me from Chao Chi Gong is that I used to break out uh, in hives when I was under huge stress. And um, as Dr. Chad mentioned, the more holistic approach, spirit, mind, and body. 
So she would ask me, what is happening in your life? What is going on in your life? And when we got to the source of the stress, then that all recovered too. So I uh, want to, you know, mention that Chachikon helps a whole variety of uh, health uh, to help you become healthy again. And so I want to, so because of that, I became a student of hers in her mm -hmm. level one training. And I want to uh, demonstrate a energy brushing technique that can help relieve chronic pain. It's, it's quite a short demonstration. And I have my uh, good friend Ron here. I will tell you a little about how the uh, brushing work. And I'm going to demonstrate it on him too. Okay. I'd like to mention. The I had pain in the right side of my neck from a automobile accident 50 years ago, and it was a constant pain from a whiplash. And I just got to uh, learn to live with the pain and didn't even think about it. And then Betty mentioned this technique about the energy uh, brushing, and she did this uh, technique that she learned from Dr. Chow and. It's, it looks very simple. However, the pain disappeared, and that was about a month ago. And originally, I could only turn my neck to about the shoulder side. I couldn't go any further back. So I got an additional range of motion increase as well. So when you watch what she does, it looks very simple. However, the energy uh, brushing really works anyway okay so i'm gonna demonstrate this on ron first before i do the brushing i do energy scanning to see where there's a warm spot on the his body that needs work and i put my hands up parallel to the body not like tight okay then i'm gonna scan it now here is that a spot here, Ron? No, very little. Very little. Okay. So now I'm going to demonstrate the brushing uh, technique. And you, I try not to brush it onto myself, the excess energy, nor onto Ron. And I don't touch him. And I'm going to demonstrate it now. Okay, Ron, do you feel any difference? Unfortunately, what she did a month ago did so much benefit for me. I don't have much uh, that she can work with now. However, the <laughs> fact that I can now turn my whole body to look behind me when I was driving, uh, as you know, when you're driving to go in a reverse, <laughs> if you can only turn your head this much, you have to end up turning your entire body. But because of the, the energy brushing, as I say, I can now turn very easily on either side with no pain. So mm. I'm a firm believer, even though it looked very simple to me initially, the results the, uh, the entire uh, situation. So it can help many, many people in your life. Uh, so thank I'll you very you. much, Ron. You're welcome. And so, uh, I, so thank you, Dr. Chow, for that uh, brushing technique. It really has helped relieve a lot of people's chronic pain. Mm. And now I want to go to uh, Dr. Chow's Precious Eight exercises, which has three major benefits. Uh, especially now, it helps to boost your immune system, increase energy, and also lose weight. Isn't that great? Don't we need this now? You can find <laughs> on YouTube her search Chow Qigong, K 
QID and need the half hour free video so you can follow along with these exercises and you can give yourself like a 30 day challenge uh, uh, so to do it daily a uh, half hour and if you uh, miss um, a day you can you go back to day one and you can see Dr. Chow holding up her set of tapes. She has two DVDs which go through the whole range of exercises and her book, uh, Miracle Healing from China, which has, you can read more details on each of the exercises and her whole system. Um, this is available on Amazon. So you can get her complete set. And now I'm going to just demonstrate three very simple exercises that are part of her precious eight. And that has helped a lot of people's health and to maintain good health uh, and well-being. Okay, so I'm going to do a, a propeller turn. So you just basically turn your arms to the back and back and then the other way. Slowly. <laughs> Slowly. <laughs> and then do it at the time. Uh, as in her video, Chow Chi going on YouTube. And then another one that she does um, uh, is um, heaven and heavenly stretch. Yeah. Heavenly stretch. I'm gonna kneel down so you can see. Me. Everybody, basically, you, you yeah. hold your hands. You lock the fingers so you're stretching your upper body the whole stretch mm -hmm. and also then she has bow and arrow which stretches you uh, horizontally so it would mm -hmm. raise up your elbow like you're clutching a bow and on this end, you put your hand out in, and you stretch it. You're about to pull an arrow and your mm -hmm. eyes in front and then you pull and release mm -hmm. and you slowly and hit the gather, target. hit the target. <laughs> and then you reverse to the other side with your arm parallel and uh, you're looking ahead and then you're stretching and then finally you let the arrow go. And mm -hmm. this is, you can do that several times. And these are detailed not only on her YouTube uh, Chow Chi Gong, and also more detailed in her set of uh, two DVDs and her book, Miracle Healing from China, and much more detail, which I highly recommend for anyone. Uh, you, it's available on Amazon for anyone who cares about their health and well being. So, and right. one last thing I want to mention is, as she had said, mind, body, and spirit. So what has helped me in uh, keeping my mental, you know, positive spirit is uh, doing a hobby that I enjoy. I have a passion to teach other people about which is uh, how to paint watercolor unique cards. That's also on uh, YouTube and it's free. Um, I want to show you what I mean. I paint these abstract watercolor cards uh, such as that. 
such as this. And oh, this. Put it up higher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And Thank you. Purple cards was one fun and easy <laughs> tutorial, uh, which you can find on YouTube. And I just want to say that I sent one of my watercolor cards, my abstract watercolor cards. To President Obama, you can see that and he wrote me back from the White House. Thank you for writing me. So um, I think it's more important to make these fun and unique cards for the VIPs in your life, your family, mm. your friends, and you can make several cards from one session on my how to paint watercolor unique cards on YouTube. It's a free video and you can make several in one session and have some fun with it. So I hope you like that video and share it with your friends. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Betty, very much. And uh, you've given a really, yes, okay. <laughs> yeah, this is really, and by the way, talking about hand clap, you clap up like this, your hands facing up to heaven, straight up to heaven, not like this, not your fingers pointing forward, up, like this. So it's a heaven and earth access. So even ordinary everyday activities, there's a right way, a better way to do it, you know, if you want. But Betty, it really is uh, very enlightening for you to show the total aspect. And we talk about uh, also relationship and community activity and et cetera. And she's very active with that too. So so with Chao Qigong or Qigong, we're dealing with the whole mm -hmm. person. So her artwork, we talk about the qi of art or the art qi. Just like there's a dance qi, there's a music qi, and there's a financial qi. And there's a psychological chi. Do you understand? So that every phase of your life has a special de department of chi. And so, so therefore, you just had an idea um, with physical relief and emotional relief, relationship relief or enhancement, and also taking up something that you really enjoy. This is with all my patients, all my students. Mm. What is your passion? It doesn't mm. matter what. And her, her painting is really easy. I mean, she doesn't have to, you know, do the figures or anything. She just dabs and then she puts a card on wherever she wants to have the card. Do you understand? It, I saw it and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to do it with my next door neighbor, yeah, the child. <laughs> you know, she's eight years old, real sweet. So she, she has learned to rub her hands and feel the chi, and she helped her dad's knee when he was having pain. Just oh. his knee. And I'm setting up a whole cadre of children to do to do this sort of thing. And so Betty is gonna be very instrumental in helping other people. There was another aspect too. Uh, we talk about, we talk about, um, Bell tummy tuck without surgery. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Intensive breathing in two hours, I have reduced 12 inches around the girth. Wow. Two hours. And it, it really works. I, I took a Dr. Charles question. It really works. And Betty was a little hanging over the jeans. She's not very fat. She's very good, quite quite slim. But you know how in jeans you get a little bit of fat hanging over, you know. And and we did twenty minutes with Betty, and there was no hangover the jean anymore. <laughs> wow! All right. Yeah. <laughs> and other other uh, other things too. Other people who said at twenty minutes they lost three inches around their waist. So the fellow had his pot belly out, you know, and after 20 minutes, 
he didn't have a pot belly. It was like straight, you know, his, his mm -hmm. tummy was his tummy was tucked in instead out like this, you know. It was <laughs> and, and that's where we have a huge problem with our obesity now. Is that mm. right? Like one of the biggest problems. And it's so easy. We're talking about 20 minutes or two hours for 12 inches. But it isn't just sitting there and sort of breathing. It's really, really concentrating and I'm sending chi and we're working with each other's chi and forcing the chi, the empty force that we work with. Okay. So actually, Betty's a model for quite a few things. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's why she was so it was so great that you could come on Betty thank you thank you so much okay all right thank thanks you. Betty I want, to, I want to point out something yeah uh, she just very briefly demonstrated what but there's a lot of details and I have detailed eye massage the chi massage I don't call it massage it's chi massage and tinnitus of the ear and we've had tinnitus 40 years and in 10 minutes gone okay and these are the particular uh, exciting aspects of chow chi gong they say well what's so different about chow chi gong we're not just exercise and meditation that is very important to build you up but for that i give you techniques of how to work how to use the points you know mm. and open up the energy system and i call it chi pressure well other people call it acupressure but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for me, if you're working on it, you must concentrate. You cannot chat. Oh, what movie did you go to? Or you went to a great dinner last night, etc. You need to concentrate. And I have sometimes multiple students working with a person or multiple students working with a client. I call them client mm -hmm. patients. And so they learn to open up and they have to concentrate and they breathe with the client. You know, you're breathing together and inhale, exhale, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Therefore, it is very, very important for you to mentally be with that person. Now, uh, in other, uh, in the YouTube, you'll find a lot of this, uh, you know, call youtube.com and just type in Dr. Every Chow. And one of my, uh, my special uh, exercises is that taking a group of people or just one person that is hard to push them. You don't let you take them and you try to push them and it's hard to push because if you push hard, it re resists that, right? Anything you do hard, it, because that's why when we're fighting cancer, we're fighting heart disease, we're fighting diabetes in the Western medicine, we're fighting ODD, we're fighting this. Well, it comes back fighting harder and we're losing the battle of fighting. So what I talk about in my book, and people always get shocked, and even now I'm saying, love your condition. And they would say, how can I love my cancer? They get really hostile. You know? mm. And then they get practicing, and they meet all kinds of different people, new people. And it's like, well, I guess I needed the cancer to move me into where I should be. Is that mm -hmm. Because they were going the wrong way. And this has always been that way. And so, so therefore, with this coronavirus, I'm sort of saying, love it to death. <laughs> and they're fighting the coronavirus, too, as well. And it is coming back. And it's mutating. And it's becoming worse. And so the thing is, the Chinese medicine in Wuhan, in China, it took only three months to clear up the cases that they didn't have any cases that they built a new hospital like instantaneously use a big structure and created the hospital for uh, for a coronavirus and within three months they had to close the hospital because they incorporated traditional chinese medicine and the qigong i teach that particular style it's called the eight uh, silk bouquets, and I call it the pressure mm -hmm. rate. And I have videotapes too, so you can find that in our website, the videotapes and all that. And so we'll put that up as a link, you know. And I have 
so many different articles that shows us that. So right now, I am in the midst of pulling together a very hot shot team to take that model from Wuhan and implement it here in the United States, in Canada, and worldwide. And if anybody listening, and you folks are interested, please join me. We need skills of all types, even just people talking about it and getting people to take the herbs, get the people to do qigong, to the people to do between our own more and and the, the and the and the point system and brushing the qi away, building up their immune system. You cannot kill a disease by fighting it. You can do it by building your immune system up so powerful that it will resist external invaders, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, so the hand washing and all that, I fight, I go for that. But they're just depending upon, wash your hands every moment and be isolated. And you'll, you'll get weaker and people are getting depressed now. People are getting mm -hmm. feisty. You know, I have a couple down the block and she said, well, we're getting a little feisty now. And I have to remind them, I said, look, just remind each other of the good things that you are to each other and to yourself. It is a time to contemplate on the miraculous individual that you are. Everybody is a miracle. And this is why with Qigong, with particularly my style of Qigong, mm -hmm. is I say you create your own destiny. And I'm sure many people say that in different words. But you need to take a look do an inventory, internal inventory. What were you born with? That's good. Every day I ask my students and my clients and my friend to say something good about yourself. So mm -hmm. find something good. Don't just repeat one thing after that. So they, their mind starts to look for good things instead of complaining, oh, she's got a pimple on her nose, you know? <laughs> And people will describe people by using the negatives, right? How many of you have found that? And using terms like, why don't we versus, hey, let's. That if you use that word, don't, why don't we, your energy goes down. And we have a mm -hmm. testing method for that, you know. And also, no problem. There's so many people that, hey, no problem, you know. And it downs your energy. Again, we have demonstrations to show your energy really being weakened with these negativism. So people mm. don't even know, don't even realize when they're saying something negative. As simple as, hey, why don't we have fish for dinner? Instead of saying, hey, let's have fish for dinner. Why don't we go to a movie? Let's go to a movie. You feel the difference in the way I said it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you're asserting instead yeah. of questioning. <laughs> well, you can still answer. No, I don't want to go. You know, hey, let's go yeah. to the movie. But you don't say, let's go to the movie. You know, right? <laughs> With a smile. And that's the other thing. You keep a smile in your heart 24 7. 24 7. Right. And you can tell when a person has a smile in the heart. And I have prescription, too, as well, a very long term, 69, 1969, I developed this. And it's my special prescription and that is having eight every day at least having eight Effie Chow heart to heart hug and three belly aching laughs a day at least no you can have a hundred but the next day you have to start with number one and so mm -hmm. why those two are very profound so, for example, hugging is a shot. You didn't hug yourself. Come on, everybody hugged themselves. I love me. <laughs> everybody hugged myself. Love myself. Everybody <laughs> hugged themselves. I love me. And I do programs for the seniors. And you know, you don't mm -hmm. touch seniors too much, you know. And and so so I have them hug themselves. I love me. I love me. <laughs> I'll push it in the back, you know that song. <laughs> and and so they go and they hug themselves. So now virtual hugging is in, right? Because you don't want to be yeah, yeah, too close. And so hugging is touch. And there's research that is done that when you touch, 
you actually increase the white blood cells in your body and it increases your immune system. This has been researched way back in 1970s with Dolores Krieger, who was a touch for health, not touch for health, the, the uh, therapeutic touch. Okay. Mm -hmm. Therapeutic touch, and I worked with her and established programs with her and everything. And so Dr. Eric Pepper at the San Francisco State University, they did a research study on what the effect of touch is when measurements and everything. So it showed the increase in white blood cells and the increase in immune system. Okay, hmm. and now the heart, the laughter. And you know, in Chinese medicine, there's a sound in every organ, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and the laughter is the sound of the heart. And so when you laugh, you know, but, uh, do you have children? Or any of the viewers have children? You know, when you're mad at your children, the children make some stupid thing and you, Kind of giggle, you know, right? And when you laugh, you can't hate, you can't be mad. Isn't that right? I and, think that's right. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, and so if you're angry, just like lift up your eyes, roll out your chin, and you're, you're like, everybody try that, okay? And just, uh, and, oh, I'm angry at you, you can't be angry. <laughs> well, you gotta <laughs> <smile>. <laughs> And the kids know that they'll play you, and when you then you know break down laughing because you know they're trying. They know you. You're trying not to laugh, and they do some more silly stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And then you laugh, and you forget, okay? And you end up hugging them instead. And so, so anyway, laughter is a sound of the heart. So when you open the heart up, what happens? You open your circulation, the blood, mm -hmm. and the blood, the red blood cell brings oxygen to all your cells and so then your breath is increased and you super optimize your body and your mind because you're all connected right you can't just send it to one part although you can you can exaggerate it you can accelerate that but when you do one thing it responds by your whole body mind and spirit okay so that's why that simple charge of get at least eight F.E. Chow heart to heart hug. So that means this face is like this, not like this. Okay. You watch people hugging and you, mm. they're always like this, you know, like right cheek to right cheek. Because that's a, everything is a natural protective instinct so that mm. it escapes each other. So you're not committed. So when you do this way and your heart connects to each other, that's commitment, yep. ladies and gentlemen. And we don't like to commit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and so therefore also handshaking, it's also a way. So how do you develop the handshake? Why was it developed? To be sure you don't have an instrument of harm. No, mm -hmm, and shake your right hand, right? Right mm -hmm. hand. And you also then people ordinarily they do this, stick the hand out like this so that you can't attack each other. But what I'm saying is that the energy flows like this and comes around in a circle. So I'm saying that you take your hands and hand shake and your hand, put the other hand on it, not on top. That's <laughs> you know that signaling what? If you put it on top, you're dominating. And so yes. you put your head on top. Then you put your head on top. <laughs> put it on the side. Hold it. With that. And you'll see the other person will automatically do that. So mm. energy flows in a total figure eight. So mm -hmm. with a mm -hmm. total handshake, you're moving the energy from that person and around to you and the eight uh, eight. Um, so, cycle and it facilitates the healing and the communication of people. You see how it's exciting that even little things like that, there are ways to do it better, and there are reasons for why it is this way. Mm. So, uh, I know we're watching the time too. It's uh, uh, it's time. yeah, we uh, uh, we we are uh, 
we the we should we should probably say to be continued because I know uh, mm -hmm. that you have uh, a lot of knowledge and and passion to share about this, but I do want to say in the time that we have um, that I'm I'm really glad that we uh, that we were able to have this time with you because uh, it was it was it was really a pleasure and an honor to have you. Uh, as a guest on the World Tai Chi Day online summit that happened a few weeks ago, but uh, but I recognize it was also such a short time frame. Uh, the the interview uh, and that that you know the it was it was just a, a short you know a short time frame to to um, to be able to deliver your message. So I was really looking forward to having having you come on here with us and and um, and be able to share. Uh, even more expansively. So, um, I uh, will we'll we'll keep it we'll keep it open and and say to be continued. I do want to make sure that people know what is the best way to connect with you. To uh, um, if they want to if they want to learn more uh, from you, learn more about uh, what you teach and um, those. Uh, you you'll put the uh, your links in the comments for this video, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. right. And we'll have a link on uh, Betty's uh, art activity too, as well. And uh, and so uh, yes, they can call. You can uh, email me at eastwestqi chi, qi at aol .com. and then we'll have the website up and etc. You know, on the link. Um, you said we'll put it up after the show. And I'm happy to come back again. I enjoyed this very much. And maybe we can teach some people some certain aspects of, you know, uh, of uh, their concerns. And if you have people who are concerned about certain things, I'm happy to come back and do a, a, a short uh, education with them. Mm -hmm. on, that on sounds that. Like what I think would be really important right now would be like maybe a lung enhancing qigong, something for your lungs. Uh -huh. Yes. So remember, you have to deal with the whole person, though. Um, of course. Or focus <laughs> on one area. But definitely the lung is most important. And, and, the, uh, and the style that I teach is definitely the lung and the heart is the most mm. important. So you're talking about oxygenation and immune building right now. Mm -hmm for very, very key. And the heart, you know that in Chinese medicine, uh, the heart is the basis of all things. Mm -hmm. Because in psychiatric, you know, it isn't the mind. In, in the West, we say, oh, he has mind problem. And psychiatric is emotional problem. Well, the emotion comes from the heart, not from the mind. The mind is a mm -hmm. reading system. And so therefore, uh, in Chinese, we call psychiatric problems or mental problem. Some lay bang. Some means heart. Lay internal heart. Bang is disease. Mm -hmm. Mental problem, psychiatric problem is some lay bang. The heart, inner heart, disease. And so therefore your thought comes from your heart. Your action originates from the heart. And I could go on another time talk about there's Western medicine, Western research that is suddenly finding and using the energetics to measure, the bioenergetics to measure, that they are confounded because they said, wow, usually we thought the mind registers the energy first, but now we're finding that the energy is registering the heart first and then the mind. Mm. Mm. So in Chinese medicine, that's very logical to us because it comes from the heart. And then your mind is a relay system for what comes from your heart to the different parts of you. Isn't that fascinating? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then Wonderful. you can into, into transplant. People have had transplant of the heart and, you know, change character totally from mm. a woman to a, a sloven, you know, drunken person, even, even killing instinct because her heart mm -hmm. was from a killer when they, when they got that. So there's a lot of these details that I have gathered and it's very, very fascinating. So the blending of the science mm. art together 
is really important. And I've been a research scientist uh, on on uh, consultation with NIH, you know, National Institute, mm -hmm. for over 37 years. And my nursing background at Stanford, we did research on uh, on kidney transplant and Dr. Shumway's uh, mitral valve operation, uh, you know, uh, the mitral valve operation at that time. So I've been in some very exciting times and developments. And this is a very exciting time because we need to get natural healing and Chinese medicine in the forefront, not backseat and third rate. We need to, in this next three years, 2023, I aim to have Chinese medicine, natural healing, structured like the medical system, not like it, but well-structured and, mm -hmm. and with a reimbursement system to pay people to stay well. Right now, people have to pay out of their own pocket, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they, insurance only pays for medical uh, and surgical intervention and the, and the, and the, and, and the diagnostic measures, you know, uh, in Western medicine. And they don't cover, I mean, maybe a little bit, but we, I am really developing this on the ground level right now and, and really excited. We're going to get by 2023 a system of natural healing and mm. wellness and health promotion and so that it will have reimbursement like a system of insurance but different, much more creative. And so are you people all in this with me? Oh, yeah. Okay. We want to encourage everyone to be healthy and to fight for it every single day. Yeah. <laughs> you have to work yeah. on your health every single day. You can't be lazy about it. <laughs> Love every day. <laughs> Not fight. Yeah. Work towards it. <laughs> Cultivate. Cultivate. <laughs> We're definitely on the same team. We're definitely on the same team as far as, as promoting the practice of Qigong and people taking responsibility for their own health. I wanted to share this uh, shout out we got from Michael Conroy on Facebook. He says, thanks, Dr. Chow, Betty, and all. So I also want to thank you both for being here, for sharing your story and message and for, for doing this great work. And, um, and I'm looking forward to uh, more collaborations to come. And thanks to Ron too. Yes, thanks Ron. Thank, thank you, Betty. Thank, thank you, you, doctor. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. All right, everyone, have a good night. Yeah, self hugs, everyone. Self hugs all around. Good job. Self hugs a day. <laughs>